G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. What's in the workshop today? Another Mitsubishi Triton. I don't recall spraying them with water to multiply them or even feed them after midnight. Sorry about that uh, Gremlins movie reference for those of you old enough. Hey, let's get back to work. All right, so this customer has bought in a, yes, Mitsubishi Triton today. It has the airbag light on, the SRS light. Um, it has been on before. Worst thing is that they were told that it was okay to have the light on. So what's wrong with it? Let's check it out. So this is a recently purchased Triton and I've done some work on it already. Um, servicing work, timing belt, etc, etc. But I did notice on the dash that the airbag light was on. I told the customer, to which they responded, um, I got told that that was okay. Yes, that's right. The dealership said to them that the light was on, but not to worry about it. The system will work just fine. That is wrong. That's right. Not only will you endanger your life by having the system not operational as soon as that light comes on, but in some states in Australia, you won't even be able to register your car. What's caused this light to come on? Let's have a look and see what we can find out. Let's pull out the old G-Scan, hook it up, and see what it tells us. Just to prove a point. Well, our lights come on as per normal. And the only one left on is that airbag light. So I've put on the G-Scan and gone through all the codes. There's some unrelated codes that are typical with these Mitsubishi Tritons. They're timeout errors that we don't need to worry about in this particular case. The SRS one, in fact, is something that I did clear last week and I told the customer it was a history code, but it's come back again. So obviously there's an issue with it. Can you see what it says? Whoops. It's the right-hand curtain squib that's got an open, according to this anyway. Now, why did it take a week? Surely if there was an open, it would bring the code straight back. Well, perhaps it's a bad connection. So what we need to do now is have a look at the resistance of the squib itself and see if that is within the correct parameters. In actual fact, I'm going to check it back at the ECU to see if there's any bad connections along the way. I'll give it a good wiggle test and see if that can bring on the fault code as well. Just a heads up, guys, SRS systems are very, very dangerous if not worked upon correctly. It's important that we turn off the ignition, disconnect the battery or pull out the SRS fuse or um, fusible link and leave it for at least 60 minutes according to the book, but I'm gonna leave it for a lot longer. Another thing I'm gonna do is while, I'm, while I've disconnected that, pull the key out of the ignition, put it on my bench so it's far away. So make sure you allow a certain amount of time to pass by before you actually work on any part of this system so that the capacitors can drain away. Why do they use capacitors? Well, the reason being is in the case of an accident, perhaps your battery cable might get severed and of course you still want your airbag to operate even after that battery cable is severed. So they use capacitors that will supply the voltage necessary to set off the airbags. As you can see, I've been a bit of a busy boy. Uh, to get to the SRS ECU, it's tucked away in behind the uh, center console there. Um, and of course all that center console has to come out just to access it. An interesting thing to note is if we zoom in there, Hopefully we can get in close enough. Notice those connectors, they're all yellow. Anything to do with SRS um, is always yellow. That's a safety precaution just to let you know what you're dealing with. Now, I've got a couple of uh, connectors hooked up to my multimeter. I'll explain why. I've been able to find online a really good uh, wiring diagram for this particular circuit. Uh, it starts at the ECU, the S SRS ECU, comes down through a series of connectors and switches right down to our curtain airbag module squib on the right hand side. You notice here there's a resistor across here. Now that fellow there is meant to be 3 ohm. Uh, you can put in a dummy uh, resistor pack there and that in turn will tell you uh, or that should switch off the warning light. In this particular case, we've got a bit of a, an iffy one because it comes and goes. Um, but if you have a look at my multimeter, you can see what I've got across those two wires. So it should be yellow-violet and yellow-blue, pin 56, pin 55. You can see I've pulled the connector off the ECU and I've back probed it on pin 55 and 56, I think it was. Yes, that's correct. Um, and we're meant to have three ohm, remember? 
and what are we reading on the multimeter? 0.4, that's almost a dead short, which is strange because it says that it's an open circuit. So a little further investigation may be required. Okay, the plot thickens. I was thinking to myself, okay, so if I've got um, direct continuity, I haven't got my multimeter on now, but just to put you back on track, if I had direct continuity across there, that could mean two things. It could mean that the squib is playing up, but hey, could it be that those two wires are touching one another? Now these Mitsubishis do have a problem with the wiring looms. They have been replaced on recall, but unfortunately this vehicle ain't one of them. As you can see, it's starting to look a bit messy there. I've dropped the headlining a little bit, just so that I can access my squib. Um, now if we come over here, uh, I can get my camera in there, that is. Uh, the squib is that little fella there. See that yellow cable going onto it? Remember, SRS is a yellow cable. If we get in just a touch closer to that um, squib, maybe I can get some more light on there for you. How's that? Uh, do you notice it seems to have a bit of rust on it? Yeah, it's a bit weird, hey. Um, what I intend doing is pulling off that connector there, and of course my pin 55 and 56 at my SRS ECU should not have continuity to one another. As you can see, I've got the connector hanging down there and I thought to myself, well, hey, just better double check and make sure that my wiring colors are correct. So, um, don't know if you can see it, but yellow blue and yellow violet as according to the wiring diagram. There should be no continuity whatsoever, should there? Because um, that wire just goes straight to an empty connector here and yet what do we find here we find that we have continuity there's another thing that I forgot to address was the fact that these have shorting bars now I know that they have them in here in the squibs but I didn't realize them that they actually have them in the harness at the ECU so it talks about putting a cable tie in place between terminals 55 and 56 um, and if we have a look up here at the top you can see that that's what they're doing there they're just shorting out uh, you shove your your um, tie strap in there and uh, that then releases these two that's why we appear to have a dead short let's see what it's like on the actual vehicle so as you can see i've got continuity there at the moment um, 0.4 of an ohm which means a dead short as i mentioned before but um so here's my tie strap all i'm going to do is i'll show you shortly what they look like but uh which is it? those two i should be able to just insert that there and it should go to open loop as we can see so there's no dead short between the wires in this particular case. Just push them in and out. I'll show you what I'm doing shortly. All I was doing was, if we have a look in the front of the connector, can you see that there? There's the little shorting bar. So when I push that into that, that removes the shorting bar. You can see that little shorting bar there. That uh, moves it away from the terminals and that in turn should give me my outer limits which it has. So I'm going to reconnect my squib and do some more measurements of resistance with the shorting bar removed and see what happens. As you can see I've reconnected my squib connector and um, so obviously we will now be measuring the resistance of the squib itself which should be 3 ohm plus the wire that goes right down to our ECU which of course will add up a little bit. Let's have a look at what the multimeter says. Are we getting that 3 ohm that we need to have? So as you can see, I've got my tie strap in there to pull away the shorting bar and I've uh, reconnected my wires or my multimeter leads. And um, if we have a look here, we can see that we've got 2.6. So I've put in a request for help from TAT Assist, the automotive technician, and I've got some good responses. One of the things that they suggested was to make sure that the squib um, code that was on the scan tool was in fact the right hand side. Some of these left hand drive, right hand drive vehicles get confused as to which side is which. So I've done that, I've actually disconnected my squib up here, reconnected all my power and battery etc, done another scan and it is present, it is the right hand side. So I'm comfortable with that. My plans now are to pull apart all the connectors along the way, check and make sure that they're in good condition, give them a spray, put them back together and make sure the retention or the way they're held together is in good condition put it all back together give it to the owner if that fails again within a week or so then i guess it's the airbag but we've got to try this don't we it's no use replacing a thousand dollar airbag or whatever it is 
um, just for the sake of replacing parts. Let's diagnose this and see if we can figure it out. As I said, I'm going to try and clean up those connectors um, everywhere they are. So we're going to go and do a bit of search and rescue. Uh, we're going to have to have a connector here going into our ECU. We're going to have another independent um, connector, another independent connector, and then of course our airbag squib. I was a little confused for a while because I saw these fellas here on and off and I thought they might be switches. In actual fact they're the shorting bars in each of the connectors um, so we have to make sure that they're in good condition and that they're working properly but uh, yeah they're just connectors basically with shorting bars in them so let's go for a bit of a search and rescue we're looking for one two three four connectors we know about our first connector that goes onto the squib uh, our squibs ah hidden up there somewhere there he is I've used some contact spray on that um, electronic contact spray and that works really really well so that one is done and of course that connector on the right there is the uh, one that sends the um, voltage to the squib um, and that's that uh, what was it yellow blue yellow purple wires um, and so I will clean that shortly I haven't done that one as yet but uh, there's also another one here I've disconnected it you can see it's disconnected there and that one has the um, wires on it there's our yellow blue and our yellow purple so I've sprayed inside of that and made sure it's got good terminal retention the other one's not quite as easy to find or get to for that matter all right a bit of search and rescue music here all right so it is we cruise along up here I don't know if I can even get my camera up there not but uh, there's a yellow connector just up the top there that I have to get to pull apart and clean now I don't know if you can see it or not but be assured it's there it's just in behind that white connector or that white relay or whatever it is there um, you may be able to see it I don't know but that one has to be pulled apart and cleaned sprayed put back together check for terminal retention yay Finally, all my years of training to be a contortionist has paid off. I've been able to access that cable. You can see it. And just go out the road there, Max. All right, so you can see that connector there. I've checked for terminal retention. That appears to be okay. Give it a bit of a spray, put him back together, reassemble the whole damn car, give it back to the customer. Who knows, we may have fixed it, or they may be up for, who knows, $1,500 worth of repair. At this point, we can only try and see. So I've hooked up the battery again. I've put all my connectors back together and chucked on the scan tool. As you can see, it's gone from a present, um, our curtain airbag open, to a history. Um, so that's a good sign. Um, but it was history before, so before I put all the vehicle back together, I thought I'd do that. So what I want to do is just erase that code for now and make sure that uh, it will disappear fingers crossed there we go so we might just do another quick scan of it and make sure that we have uh, <clears throat> done it correctly and so no trouble codes at the moment not that that's saying much but hey um, we're back to square one those connectors may fix the fault uh, fingers crossed that it does so I've got it all back together now all the bits and pieces shoved back where they belong hopefully all the trims don't rattle and stuff that's always a concern but uh, yeah airbag squib is back in place etc etc so look I'm hoping that we have sorted out the issue I, I don't know until the customer lets me know so road test and uh, then we'll have a quick chat afterwards so in case you're not aware of it, it's bucketing down outside. Thunderstorm, the whole works and jerks that explains this. So I've just got back from my road test. I've gone across quite a few bumpy roads to try and create poor continuity um, issues between terminal retention. I guess you can say so where the terminals come in. I was trying to make a, a vibration, which in turn would bring the airbag light on. Fortunately, it hasn't come on as yet. I don't hold much faith in it at the moment. I've got to give it back to the customer, let them drive it for about a week, 
We'll see what happens then. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Max. Um, I just wanted to keep the peeps up to date with what's happening with this particular vehicle. So it's been over three weeks since I did the repair and the airbag light is still off. But eh, I'm not overly confident. The customer, however, is just about to register it today with the airbag light off, so that is good news. One thing I thought I'd keep you informed about is what Mitsubishi call a hotline fix. This is an internal fix that is done by the dealerships when a vehicle is bought in with certain codes. I'll list those codes in the description below, as well as the hotline fix code. Now, I was able to find this online after much research um, in forums, etc. I'll put those links in as well. But the thing is that you've got to push these dealership guys to get this hotline fix done. Look, it's airbag related. I don't understand why it's not a safety product recall. It should be done, just like the Takata airbags. This wiring loom creates an issue that is not safe for your particular vehicle. So I'll put all the details in the description below for you. Hopefully that helps you guys. So the actual fix that repairs this problem is quite a big job, and maybe that's one of the reasons they don't like doing it. What has to happen? Well, the carpets come out, the seats come out, the headlining gets dropped, the overhead wiring loom gets replaced um, for the uh, curtain squibs, and then underneath the carpet, that's why the seats have got to come out, that goes to the seat belt pretensioners. Big job. And the actual fault that's behind it is not necessarily what we usually think is the fault. It's not necessarily the connectors themselves, the male and female section of the connectors, but rather where the wire Let's have a look here, where the wire goes into the connector at the back. It's not crimped properly and it causes oxidization of the wire and therefore a bad connection, bringing on the airbag light. In this particular case, it seems to be okay at the moment, but mm, only time will tell. And then I'll encourage the customer to go straight to the dealership to get that hotline fix carried out. Well, Max, back to you. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a new one for me. I haven't had too much to do with airbags previous to this, but I, as usual, I'm always learning something. So if you did enjoy the video and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, feel free to comment down below, and don't forget about that notification bell. You don't wanna miss any future videos. So until next time guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.